Hey there, podcast fans. We are back with a, uh, at this point in his career, he's kind of an industry legend. Just about everybody knows who he is. Uh, he, he puts out a ton of great content through EGIA and through his own coaching and uh, uh, load calculation business. And we're going to be talking about some of that stuff today and both him and his business partner's unique approach to sales that doesn't make you feel icky. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I don't know what uh, what do you have to say about that, Tersh? Uh, Drew and I we met face to face the first time um, at in Vegas at the EGIA event, and like I, I followed Drew for a while and um, that everybody there. But just talking, the more we were able to talk and have a conversation, the more I was like, man, like this guy is a wealth of knowledge. Like I, I think that uh, Drew is kind of under publicized as how, how much information he has and how much he's willing to share. And, and uh, I'm super thankful to be able to meet him and, and have that conversation in person. That's because Drew, Drew is, uh, and the, I don't, I don't want to say older school in that way, but like, he's not the, uh, he's not beating his own chest. Let's just say that we, you know, he's, he's not out there promoting himself. So I think uh, not as many people know who he is and what he does, but he's got some super valuable stuff, and hopefully uh, you guys get a lot out of the show today. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm with you there. Are you looking for valuable business advice to reach that seven-figure revenue mark? Do you want actionable tips to properly navigate through every business challenge you encounter along the way? Let Tersh Blissett and Josh Crouch be your guide in getting you to the top here at Service Business Mastery. Tune in as they sit down with world-renowned authors in business, leadership, and personal growth who share valuable insights about management, marketing, pricing, human resources, and so much more. Let their nuggets of wisdom gold guide you in owning a thriving, profitable, and ever-growing business. Here are your hosts, Tersh and Josh. Welcome, hey, Drew. Welcome to the show. Hey, gentlemen. How you doing? Fabulous. Good, good, good. Freezing. Good. <laughs> <laughs> so, thanks, tell, thanks for having me back on again. Yeah, absolutely. So tell us about you for anybody who missed the previous episodes and a um, little bit about yourself and, and your background um, and, uh, yeah, all that good jazz. Yeah, well, appreciated the comments uh, yeah, leading up to this. Uh, you know, uh, Russ and I, my business partner, we like to call it humble confidence. Uh, so, yeah, we don't, we, we're not bombastic out there, but uh, to each his own. Um, yeah, I, I grew up in this business from the age of 12, uh, son of a boss. I had a you know, older brother, two years older, and younger brother and sister, uh, two years younger. And, you know, after swim team practice, we'd come home and we'd go to work at eight, starting at age 12. And so I, I literally grew up in the business and uh, my dad started the business the year before I was born and I worked in every facet of the business. We did residential, largely residential new construction, uh, very little service or replacement until the early nineties when the bottom dropped out of the new construction and we were on the brink of bankruptcy at that time. And the union was picketing our jobs and our offices and it became a hot mess. We decided to pivot in 1990 and become a, a true residential company. And I was in college, you know, as that was kind of happening, but I was still working in the business part time. And then we uh, we transitioned to a full residential replacement to service company, a little bit of commercial work, very little custom new construction at that point. And in 1996, we ended up selling it to a local utility company called Delmarva Power, which was uh, uh, building a regional strategy around uh, five states mm. uh, in home services because the utilities had become deregulated. So I played that game for about 18 months. And then I jumped ship and went over to Service Experts, which is a publicly traded company, and did that for about another 18 months. And then 1999, I, uh, everybody was telling me what I was doing for Service Experts I should do for myself and, and for clients, which was business consult, coach, and train. And so since 1999, I, we started out as Supernova Selling Systems, ultimately evolved that in 2004 to 
HVAC solutions. And in 2021, we evolved that into Flow Odyssey. And uh, about about 11 years ago, I brought on my business partner, Russ Horrocks, who you've had on the show before as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. And um, so that's kind of the Flow Odyssey side. And then you mentioned energy design systems. Um, Phil, Phil Jeffers was a gentleman who started that company back in the 70s. And he was building uh, load calculation tools and energy modeling tools and had worked with utilities and builders and manufacturers and contractors for years and years and years and, and sold us our first uh, computers and software at John H. Cameron and Sons uh, all, all the way back in the, um, I guess that would have been in the 80s when we started doing things with floppy disks to, <laughs> to you know, do things back and forth. That's taken us I mean, back. Because there was no hard drives. <laughs> yeah. yeah, these are five and a quarter inch, five and a quarter inch <laughs> floppy disks, right? So one had your operating system and the other one had the program you were running. And nice. uh, so, yeah, so those were K-Pro computers and... Um, they were like the size of a, of a bread box. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and so, yeah, if, if I'm telling you the size of a bread box and you don't know what one is, you know, I'm old. <laughs> so, uh, Sadly, I know what that um, is. <laughs> yeah. But the other thing it was, is he had a calculator that was an energy calculator that was a, you know, that ran a, a, a tape, uh, you know, out of it. It was a sharp calculator uh, that he packaged into a, aluminum attache case that he got from sharper image and mm. what was in it originally was a liquor set and he mm. realized my calculator all i got to do is change the foam and the calculator will fit in the liquor set yeah <laughs> if you knew phil that that made sense so uh that was the first foray into the software uh sadly uh phil you know uh, passed away in 2014 so i took over the company for his widow i ran it for her for three and a half years just as a good faith gesture because the man had done so much good for me and my family in the industry that I wanted to keep, keep the thing flowing for his wife if I could. Yeah. And then, you know, I got some guys who came along and said, listen, we don't want to see this disappear. You know, what, what if we invest with you and we'll buy the company? I was like, okay, let's do it. So in 2017, we bought the software company and that's energy design systems. And so there we have the low calculator energy auditor, and we have a brand new uh, flat rate, uh, residential price book tool coming out here in the next couple months. So tell me a little bit about the price book tool that's coming out uh, and, and the fact that I want to make sure that we touch on the fact that um, <clears throat> how simple it is to use this platform uh, for creating the, I guess the sales process throughout the sales process. So it's not super like we've all used the, the several other software platforms that are like you could spend, spend a week doing something, if, especially if you've never done it before, it would take, you know, you had to take a course on how to learn how to use that platform. And then even then sure. it's going to have all these variables and you could be way, you could be a ton or so off if you're not messing, you know, if you're not, you know, doing it just right. So uh, can you go into a little bit of detail of that, about those two? Uh, the load calculator and the price book? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So let's start with the load calculator because that's a tool that's been out there for, about uh, almost 20 years now. Um, you know, I grew up using, well, I grew up doing the forms and then, you know, got ACCA certified using a spreadsheet. And then eventually uh, Elite Software had a program, has a program called RHVAC, room by room load calculator. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very detailed, ACCA oriented. And what we ultimately came, came to find is that most contractors go into a house and they know the size of equipment that the house requires where they'll, they'll go ahead and they'll run a, a rule of thumb. And there's lots of rules of thumb out there based on square footage and, and whatnot. Um, you know, but what most contractors do when they do a load calculation, what we come to find is that they do a load to get the result that they already believe. So they're gamifying the load. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, so exactly. true. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, and, and, and most of them are only doing that because they probably have to do the load to get the permit, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. They're not doing the load for the real reason, which is number one, you should do it to verify um, because what we know about houses and construction today is more than what we knew about when these houses were built mm -hmm. and how he, houses lose heat and gain heat. And so, um, you, know, I, you know, and today's technology of equipment uh, operates way differently. And so we have to move more air. And, and so what you come to realize, and most contractors don't even know the size by the sensible, sensible gain versus the total gain. They sense by the total gain, size by the total gain, and they're usually off by a quarter to a half a ton. 
And so what Phil realized was we had been selling the elite software for years and training it for years uh, all over the United States and Canada. And he realized, let's build a tool that's very simplistic. One that the contractors will, number one, actually use because it only takes five minutes. It's not a science project that takes you know, 30, you know, 30 to 60 minutes. And let's make it easy enough that they'll do it, number one. But number two, that it's easy enough for the customer to be shown it and be educated as to what's going on. And then this way, you know, that, and that brought right into our, our core sales philosophy. When you educate a customer and you give them good information so they can make a good decision, they make good decisions. They actually make better decisions, mm -hmm. which means they're going to buy from the person who helped them really get it. And so that really is what, what became of the load calculator. And, and so even Hank Rakowski, who is the author of ACCA Manual J, I highly respect you know, ACCA and Hank, but even they say their tool oversizes by 20%. Mm. And, and, and if you've so already gamified it, if you've already gamified it and made it, you know, too large. So your humidity here in the South, humidity is a big deal for us. Mm -hmm. So you oversize the system right. by half a ton, a ton, just because their old system isn't keeping up. And it, we all know it's because it's low on refrigerant. It's got a clogged evap coil, clogged condensed coil, never been maintained, but they want to go up a, a ton or a half a ton. In reality, we know that that's not a good choice to make because it's going to be humidity nightmare. And if right. you just keep doing it and keep doing it, and, and then all of a sudden you have lawsuits on your hands because they have mold growing in their house because it, it just, it just it's Josh, you snicker, but it is so true. Like it's oh, scary. I'm sure you guys got is. some, you guys got some crazy <laughs> humidity out there. It that's is. Definitely that's wild. Not my it's speed. so much of the year. So, but yeah, I love, I love that yeah. part. That you and that's where he perfected it. That's where he perfected this tool was Texas and Florida because he had these deals with a couple manufacturers and a couple uh, new construction builders and whatnot, and um, you know, and then he had to deal with another, you know, another, another manufacturer that does geothermal stuff. And I don't want to obviously you know push manufacturers, but you know, he he learned you know as to how things really work out there in the real world. And so the whole idea behind any load calculation is number one, let's figure out what size equipment the house uh, requires. And then once we know that, we know how much air we need to move. And once we know how much air we need to move, then we know we can basically do a duct evaluation. And I don't care if you're just using a tape measure and a, uh, a ductulator, or if you're going to do what National Comfort Institute, uh, known as NCI uh, protocols, National Comfort Institute says, is pull out a flow hood and do a static pressure test and a flow hood test and measure the airflow. Take the blood pressure of the system. That, that right there is a game changer. Every contractor that I try and get on to National Comfort Institute when they do, I mean, it is literally like a lethal weapon. A flow mm -hmm. is a lethal weapon because a homeowner starts to follow you around with it. Like how many of us have ever asked a homeowner, any hot spots or cold spots in the house? And they say no. Nope. <laughs> so, you know, the, yeah, because they know the answer leads to them having to probably pay more or you're going to try and sell them something. But see, the math, facts, science, and data of a flow hood and a load calculation don't lie. And so you give the customer the flow hood, they start measuring, you start recording the data, you are like, you're like, yeah, this this one's not moving as much as that one. Shouldn't they be moving the same? And you're like, you would think so. Was that something mm -hmm. you can fix? I, I don't I don't know. Is it something you want to fix? Well, I don't know. It depends on how much it costs. Okay, well, <laughs> you know, when I get when I get up to the attic, I'll take a look and see what's going on, and I can tell you what's going on and what what the issue is, and then I can tell you what it, you know a couple options to fix it, and you can tell me if you want to do it or not, right? But when you come back and you be and, and they see that you know that you know, the test results, like it's like going to a doctor and getting lab results. And then, you know, they prescribe a test or a, or a, a surgery or a, uh, or a prescription, and then you don't take it. And then you complain that you didn't get better. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't make any sense. <laughs> exactly. That's great. I mean, that's so just so for anyone that uh, is not watching this and is listening to this, the website where you can check out more information is www.eds.tech. And they have information, at least right now, from what I can see, on both the load calc and auditor. Are you? Do you guys have anything for the uh, price book coming out on the site or anything like that? No, I, we don't have the information up yet because it's not launched. But the price book is going to be um, a really cool tool. And, and to what uh, you know, Tersh said a little bit earlier, it's going to be it's the first tool that I'm aware of that's out there that is not proposal based, right? Most of the software is designed to generate a proposal. And in our process, a proposal is a crutch for a weak salesperson or a weak sales process. Because what happens is you generate these proposals and, 
and the customer then basically has all of your information to shop you. Yes. So the software out there that you've probably, yeah. The customer sees a brand logo. They see the mm -hmm. brand name, right? They see the model, the efficiency, the capacity, um, you know, all the details about, you know, the things that are baked into it. And while the things may be the most expensive part of the solution, they're the least important part of the solution because 70% of the manufacturing process actually takes place in the home. So the manufacturer's not really responsible for the customer success. The contractor is. Yep. So why are contractors using software tools that, interestingly enough, if you look at all the tools, all of the vendors of these tools, and I know a lot of them, they're nice guys, and they've, they've done a lot of great stuff for the industry, mm -hmm. but they've designed a tool to the manufacturer's specifications, and they partner with the manufacturer to get the audience to buy their tool. And that, that's a way that's a way to go to business, but it's just not, yeah. you know, in our mind, the best way. Yeah, and then you have software platforms. You know, you know the big behemoth out there that has its own software and its own pricing tools. Um, they've ge they've generated also one that's manufacturer oriented because they have partnerships with manufacturers and distributors as well. And so what we built is something that's based off of an Excel tool that I created back in 2004. It's got seven positions from top of the line down to entry level and everything in between. And it's brand agnostic. Yes, there's brand in the background. There's models in the background. So you yeah. know, you know what to put in there as far as your cost structure. But it's very simple to set up. Uh, you could probably set it up in a day and... Um, and then you'll have the ad super admin account. You'll have a you know, user account. And the cool thing about it is, is it'll be something that you can either use on a tablet or a laptop, or you'll be able to print it out into the form of a book, which is what we do now with our, our Excel spreadsheet. And we literally take a price book, a menu, if you will, into the mm -hmm. home. Because so that's tell how me, people is, buy nowadays. I mean, I understand. It, it, well, tell me this. Is it... Um seven choices that were given to the client is, is that not too many? I, I, Cause uh, we know they like, there's, there's people that coach six options and then four options, three options. And my guys, and I know why I get this because I was a service tech once before to um, the, it, they say anything over four options and then the com customer gets confused. Uh, so tell me your thoughts on that. Yeah. So there were two studies that were done. One was back in the seventies and it was done by Harvard and it looked, it was looking at 35 millimeter cameras. And the idea was, you know, a choice of one is a choice of none, right? It's kind of a, it's yeah. a gun to the head. You want, do you want the camera or not? Right. Give a customer two choices and it was about a 50, 50 split and give a customer three choices of cameras. And it was like, you know, 21% bought at the upper end, about 70 some percent in the middle and about, you know, seven to 10% at the lower end. Right, so you know the bell, it's that bell curve type thing. So 1994, Notre Dame came out and they did a study and they said, you know, how many choices is too many choices? And they said, they, they came out and they really kind of settled on six. Um, but then I read another study and, and I forget where that came from, but it had something to do with psychological middles. And so the cool thing is, is that this whole mantra is based off of, uh, Basically, people look at the high, they look at the low, and they throw those out, and they kind of settle in the middle. So with seven, if you throw out the high and you throw out the low, there's still five left, mm -hmm. and there's still an actual middle, right? Makes sense. So there's two above the middle and two below the middle. Well, then, again, you go through buyer psychology. There's a, a, a book called Biology, uh, uh, and one of them, you know, where they one of the studies that they did is that basically there are three levels of buyers. There are premium-based buyers, there are value-based buyers, and there are uh, economic-based buyers. And so when you bake it all together, along with color scheming, along with price points, along with financing, along with benefits, that's kind of what we did. And we basically say there's three buyers, and so at every stage, there's three options. And, and two of the systems overlap, right? So there's three at the top, three at the middle, right, where one overlaps, and then three at the bottom where one overlaps, right? So depending on what type of buyer you have, there are three choices for you. And so, but the cool thing about this is, is the customer can see all seven mm -hmm. at once. The comfort advisor's job is to direct where are we beginning this conversation 
based on the survey and the visit and the questions and the conversations that you've had in the home. So you're really only ever having a conversation about two or three choices. Mm -hmm. But that's the cool thing about this is it's the perspective of seeing all seven that says, I know where I, where I exist in the marketplace too, as a consumer. So, and so it's the most powerful thing uh, that we've ever seen happen, you know, out there is pulling all that psychology yeah. behind the tool. That was what in the breakout that I took, uh, uh, I think Russ was the play by play and you were the, you kind of chimed in after uh, that sort of thing. But um, you guys really dive into the psychology of a buyer. So you're, you're not, you're not just teaching, say this when a customer says this, you're teaching like, what is the customer thinking? The yeah. why behind it. The why behind it. So that way you're actually growing a skill set instead of just copying what someone else told you to say. Because a response. I, yeah. I had a contractor that I invited, and hopefully he's watching, um, because he had taken some sales training from people we know, and he felt like a robot. He His sales were worse afterwards because he was trying to do the process, right? Instead of just actually being a, like live and in person with the conversation and understanding what the what the right. customer was actually thinking when he was talking to him. Um, but maybe you can, maybe that's a segue right. into talking about your guys's uh, flow odyssey. Your like, you know, kind of the process behind how you built that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Th yeah. Thank you for that. And uh, you, you know, and not unusual that your colleague, you know, felt that way. And why? Because he was being told to do something, not be someone. Right. And here's what I, I don't want you to be me and I don't want you to be Russ and I, you know, and, and we can't be you. I want you to be the best version of you, the most elevated version of you. So that's why we call we call our process, not the sales process. And we don't do sales training. We use that word sales because everybody knows it. Mm -hmm. right? But we call what we teach the elevated consumer buying experience, because that's what it's about. Customers are either going to buy from you or they're not going to buy from you. You're either helping them buy from you, or you're, you're basically driving them away because you either you know, validate their fears or you eliminate their fears. And most salespeople validate their fears. And here's the interesting thing. There's, there's nothing wrong with any of that other sales training that's out there. It's not good or bad or right or wrong. Same with ours. And I don't like, I don't say ours is better. It's just different. And here, what we've come to realize is, is that you can be successful selling that way and selling things and wheeling and dealing on price and discounts and stuff like that. You just can't be great. Greatness mm -hmm. is something that is achieved a, a different, in a different fashion. And so we've just chosen a more human way uh, of selling that, that aligns with the way people choose to buy. Yeah. I and like that based on psychology. I like that because if you're not a natural born salesman or salesperson, that's sometimes it's very much like, ah, I just, I, I can see that working for some people, but it doesn't work for me because I'm not a salesman. Uh, so creating the, the psychology side of things and knowing the why behind it, then you're serving. I feel like you're, you're less selling more serving. And that's where I'm at. Like yeah. that's where I, thrive is the serving aspect of things um so like I, I love that that everything that you mentioned there uh as far as now one question i have is this just for uh like your comfort consultant or your your salesperson or is this for service experts also no this is for everybody i mean you know just just be more human is is a just a principle of life right I mean, mm -hmm. Yeah, it works. For, it works for technicians. It works for the customer service uh, call takers. If you have outbound call takers, uh, people, some people call it inside sales. It mm -hmm. works with them as well, uh, and, and of course the comfort advisors. And and we don't really get into the new construction commercial space anymore. Uh, but when we do, when we do, it works there too. It's just people want to deal with people, mm -hmm. you know, and they buy from people they like and people they trust and people they respect. And they respect you if they sense that you don't have an agenda. Most sales is outcome focused. And mm -hmm. the reason is, is because we keep score. Oh right? yeah, absolutely. But John, you know, yeah, but John Wooden, who, uh, and this is in our training, John Wooden used to coach UCLA basketball back in the seventies. He's all right. He was one of the most winning. <laughs> <co> <laughs> yeah. You know, he, um, he was one of the most winningest coaches of all time at any level in any sport. He's not that, the, the, that guy now, but, he can't keep, you know, he, he basically got out of the game before he continued to build you know, his legacy. But he had an 83.3% winning percentage, a 
I think any of us would love that closing ratio. <laughs> and um, he won 10 NCAA tournaments and at one point, seven March Madness tournaments in a row. Wow. And he never coached the word win or winning in practice, pregame, I've or half. I've seen that. He said, yeah. He said the results will be what they should be, when they should be, based on how we execute. And the ups and downs, mm. the emotional ups and downs of winning and losing, you know, preclude us from executing at the highest level. And he wanted to remove that from his player's psyche. And so he just focused on execution. And so, yes, then they won more games and more tournaments you know, than anybody else. And so, I mean, the guy literally day one would have the players show up to practice and they would take, he'd have them sit down, take their, sh- their sneakers off, take their socks off, and he would teach them how to put their socks on and their sneakers on because his belief was if your socks aren't on right, then your sneakers aren't, aren't, aren't going to fit your foot right. And if you're, you're – Socks and sneakers aren't on right. You're going to get blisters. And if you get blisters, you can't practice. And if you can't practice, you can't play. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So let's go all the way back to the fundamentals. Let's just be better humans. So I was going to I ask you about what, what John mentioned there, uh, uh, you know, and what you mentioned about John doing the, the socks and the shoes. And you even mentioned the going back to the fundamentals. At any point, uh, do you have – people taking offense to like, look, man, this is real basic. Like, this is not for me. This is for your new guys. Don't come back to me with this nonsense. Like, do you ever have that situation? Like me, I, I, I like the thought process there. Um, I just wonder if you have someone that's already selling 2 million a year um, and then you present them with this um, thought process, anybody that's anybody that's in halfway intelligent, they want to improve. So they're going to take, information from the platform that that will help um but i wonder if you've seen imp- even improvements in those individuals that are already selling a lot and do they actually take offense to to dumbing down to the fundamentals type thing yeah um let's put it this way they don't they don't readily speak up in a class and say <laughs> hey you know think, i'm offended this is stupid <laughs> yeah. know, where's uh, my safe they, space you know, <laughs> yeah i mean have people yeah, we have we gotten some reviews where people didn't you know didn't like it for some reason. Yeah, maybe maybe they never wanted to come to the class to begin with. They were sent there, and, I, and basically, I had a, I had a prisoner for a couple of days. I, you know, um, some people come to class and they're prisoners, and some people come and they're on vacation, and some people come to learn, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, yeah. Let, let's say yes. I you know I'm sure there are, but it you know because a closed mind will find a thousand excuses, an open mind will find a thousand ways. Right. And you only need to find one way. And and so everybody can learn. The cool thing is, is we get we get a lot of testimonials from people who say, I've been doing this for X number of years. And this is like the first thing that I've attended, you know, attended, listened, watched, whatever, you know, however they're taking the course and whether it's live or virtual. um, that is actually new and original and made sense and felt good. And, and even in 40 years, we got actually, Russ got a testimonial a couple weeks ago, 40 years in the business. And the guy says, he goes, I've heard everybody in the industry. He goes, and this was the first, you know, unique approach that I heard. And, and it made sense and it felt comfortable. And, and so we get a lot of that. Uh, I had a guy send me a, an email um, yesterday, no, two days ago. And, and he basically said, you know, I had my best year ever. And he goes, and the, the three months that I got to work with you, he goes, we're life changing. And that's really what it's about. It's not, it's not just about what you do in the home. It's about who you become through our training, right? We don't focus just on, you know, when we come in, we don't focus just on the role. We focus on you. We focus on your, your identity, you know, who you are, how you show up in life. Because, you know, people like to think there's a professional life and a personal life. No, it's just life. Mm-hmm. And you, you ebb and flow and you modulate based on what you do. Right? I don't want you to be somebody different to your wife and kids or uh, husband and husband and kids and then be somebody different in the home. You know, I, I want the best version of you showing up in every facet of what you do mm-hmm. because you're a human being. You're not a human doing. Yeah. So this was – I took your at, – at the Epic event, and I, I know I, I even shared this earlier and I probably shared it before. Uh, I took – Russ and uh, Drew's breakout, and it was. I'm like, okay, it's sales training. Learn something, right? Not thinking uh, I was gonna, 
I, I was literally my my wife who had been in sales. She's done sales training with Lennox. Uh, I think she's had some other trainer at a larger company, and she's uh, even uh, the one in Arizona. Perfect. I don't. Know, they got a system there with train. Uh, I can't remember their name, but um, she's taken sales training. I've taken plenty of sales training. It was just. It really was eye opening on the philosophy and a lot of the feedback I heard after the show. Just people coming up to you while I was waiting my turn to like officially introduce myself was uh, it it was just very unique approach. And it was a very, it was an approach. Everyone's like, wow. I mean, I don't have to like feel shady or feel Mm -hmm. like I'm selling snake oil. I could just be myself and I can actually sell. It was like, (laughs) it's one of those moments I think for a lot of people. And that was why I was was really happy to take that uh, class. Can I ask you, um, I guess give can you give an example of how we would deal with a client objection through the process? I I, I would love to, for the people that are listening or, or watching this to kind of get a little bit of a feel to it. Like we don't have to go through an entire process or anything like that, but um, what would make it different, or how would we get, increase our closing percentage dealing with with um, objections? That's a, and that's a great question, and it's funny because I. You know, I, I learned all the traditional ways of selling, you know, from the masters, right? Yeah. Tom Hopkins and Brian Tracy, Tony Robbins, Zig Ziglar. I, I mean, I met these guys. I went to, you know, Tom Hopkins' house even in uh, Arizona years ago. And I read the books and I've taken the classes. My dad, I mean, I have the gift of an amazing education that my, 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 my parents gave me. And my dad sent me to, you know, University of Maryland. Then I went and got, you know, educated through the, you know, through the trades. You know, uh, some of the names that are still out there, you know, teaching this stuff. I've read and attended their stuff. And, and what I learned was it, it, it just isn't reality, right? It, it's all designed to get an agenda. And, and so if I just focus on the people, then the results will take care of themselves. And so we've been doing, you know, what I, you know a version of what I've been teaching since the mm-hmm. early 90s. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and there's some people who've really kind of helped, you know, get me along the way there. And so... To answer your question is, what I came to realize is any sales training that has, you know, in the book or in the in the course synopsis, how to handle objections, how to overcome objections, yeah, is flawed training. It already says we know our process doesn't work, so we're going to give you back doors <laughs> to escape out the backside. <laughs> okay. The idea is, the idea is this is to deal with all of the things that you know you're going to get hit with. Uh-huh. That because ultimately become objections, price, money, affordability, what someone else might be doing versus what you might be offering, all of that stuff. If you're not having those conversations as part of your conversation, yeah. they become objections. Okay. So the way to get rid of objections at the end is deal with everything you know is going to be an issue with this customer during the course of the conversation. Now that that, that being said, does that mean that on occasion – myself or some of the guys we you know we do ride along coaching with and whatnot don't run into that and, and do we have ways to handle that sure we do so for mm-hmm. example um so the idea is, is number one avoid the objections is 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 how to deal with it but then number two is have a very human way to deal with it if it does in fact come up so the one for example is let's say the customer says hey i've got a i got a price on essentially the same thing for about two thousand dollars less well Come to realize, let's understand that if the customer thinks that what I'm offering and what someone else is offering are exactly apples to apples, and if you hear that kiss of death phrase, Mm -hmm. realize that's on you, that's not on the customer. Mm. Okay, number one. Number two, you're allowing this customer to comparison shop because you comparison sold. And if you continue to comparison sell, then the customer treats it as a commodity and they will buy on price. Yeah. Right. But if you were compelling, if you were compelling, there'd be no comparison. And so that's what we teach in our sales process as well, or our, you know, our education. So when a customer says that to me, I said, listen, you know, ABC company, you know, I'm, a, I'm familiar with them. I know what they do. I know how they do things. And we do things differently here at John H. Cameron and Sons, right? And I'm not going to tell you, you, you know, we're right or wrong or we're better or anything like that. That's up to you to decide if, you know, what's the best value for your dollar. But here's what I can tell you. They know what their products and services are worth better than I do. And if that's how they see themselves and that's what they think that they're worth for what they, you know, the value that they bring to the table, along with the impact that they're going to make in your long, in your life, along with the, um, the value and the level of service that they're going to provide after they do the installation, then I guess that's what they're worth, Mm -hmm. you know? And so, but you know, that's not who we are. 
And that's why, you know, uh, the differences in what we do typically, you know, are this, this, this. And I will lay out, lay, uh, yeah. lay out some of the differences. Lay out the value. The customers problem. who choose to, yeah. And the customers who choose to do business with Johnny H. Cameron and the Sons have told us it's those differences that make the difference. Mm. But you can go ahead and look, you know, and again, then I can say you can go online and look at the reviews. We have, you know, you know as long as you clients, actually have, have this. As long as you actually have this stuff to back it, to really back it up. And now if you're more expensive make and it you up. provide worse service and you provide, <laughs> you have no reviews online, that's a different, you can't stand on that leg. Uh, so what would yeah, you say so we about- build, We build it, we build the engine. What, what would you say about this, Drew? Um, we have a lot of people who live up north and come down and have rental houses uh, or vacation homes and they come down and they're like, I'm here for a week. I need to get my air conditioning replaced. Uh, I I have like, let's say 10 other clients or 10 other companies that are coming out here afterwards. Obviously we've failed on the front end um, by not being the last person there in the door. But what would you say if they, they did want to compare prices and it's the, the, obviously the emotion needs to be built in there. Like, long term um, and being long distance away. But what would you say uh, to that client whenever they, they, they hit you with that right at the end of the conversation? Well, I mean, I think you have to find out who these people are and what's important to them. Right. And, mm -hmm. and so when a customer says to me, you're getting multiple quotes, this is a customer who I said a, a minute ago is comparison shopping mm -hmm. because they think that they can it's because it's what we do in life, right? Yeah. We buy cars that way. We buy appliances that way. We buy electronics that way. We buy groceries, clothing. We can buy everything by going and comparing things because mm -hmm. all the value is in the thing. All the value of what we do as contractors, roofing, windows, siding, gutters, uh, HVAC, plumbing, electrical, generators, all that is in the installation service and maintenance process. It's the part of the design too. It's not, the value is not in the things. Mm -hmm. The value is in the impact and the results that you get. Okay. And very little, like I said, very little of that comes from the, the, you know, the boxes of the things, right? Only about 20% of that comes from the value and the impact yeah. that you're going to get comes from the thing. 70% is based on the contractor, right? And so I understand that most customers try to in comparison shop this like they try and buy other things. Let me teach you how to buy and where value comes from Bill and Susan, right? And okay. so now I can teach them, here's what you, you, you know, and I have a process that takes them through that. And so in our, in our elevated consumer buying experience, that's what we do. We teach contractors how to teach customers how to buy mm -hmm. and where the value comes from. So you guys started out asking the questions about a load calculator. I'm going to start right there. I ask a room of people. In fact, I think I did it that day in Epic. Um, when Josh was in the room, I said, how many of you do load calculations? Right? Mm -hmm. and all the hands went up. Right. And I said, how many of you do them on every single house you go to? <laughs> And most of the hands went down, right? <laughs> yep. And and so I said, so right there, right there, I've got you. And that's one thing, right? How many of you do guys are pulling out a flow hood or a duculator? Oh, right. That's a game changer right there. Yeah. Right. And so so listen, Bill and Susan, do yourself a favor. If you're gonna go ahead and, and and you know shop this around, and by all means do. An educated consumer is our best customer. Here are the things that you want to look for. Measure contractors this way and give them a buyer's guide. Teach the customer how to buy. Set that bar so high that any other clown in town who comes in and plays the game at the lowest level is out. Mm -hmm. Right. And then, it's, and, then it's, and then, like you said, you can say, give me last shot. I'm, right. I'm, I'm not a fan of that, but okay. right. Cause that, 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 that's manipulative a little bit to some extent mm -hmm. to say, you know, and then if you want, I mean, I've, I'll, you can give my, you can give me your quote today or I'll come back when, you know, when, you, when you've done your due diligence and we can have a conversation, but don't not do these things. Yeah. Right. And all this stuff is based off of third party stuff, ACCA, Energy Star, the Department of Energy, uh, Building Performance Institute, National Comfort Institute, you know, Russ and I teach what we call third party credibility. So it's not, it's not my opinion. It's mm -hmm. math. It's math facts, science, and data. Do we need to print that kind of information and data out and give it to the client every time we do a job? I would, uh, you know, print, I would print it out, 
or at the very least, if you're going to email it, you send it as a PDF. Mm -hmm. the, if you try and direct customers to websites, they get lost. Good intentions, people, right? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. We just, they, they get lost. They, they just never do it. They don't have the time. So if you but if you put it in front of them, when they finally sit down to make the decision, it's right there. It's accessible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, you know, no matter what you think about, you know generations and, and technology and, and even restaurants are trying to go towards QR codes mm -hmm. by far. And the only reason they really went towards QR codes is because of the pandemic right. by far. Most, most restaurants still are putting a menu out in front of you. Why? Because I prefer the, the menu there, all the information. Same here. I, I can't, I can't stand yeah. looking at it on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Tersh's better half well, they, had a question that uh, it's kind of, it's on the same topic. So it says, Drew, what do you say are the top ways to build credibility and value to win them over from start to finish? And how do you find our best ways to share that along the way or after, which is kind of what we're talking about. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you, Julie. Um, it, it, you know, we basically are, the process is what allows us to unfold. Right. And, and there's a, there's a, crescendo building, if you will. Um, so we start out, you know, soft and easy with light and, you know, um, fact finding questions. And then we get into the deeper questions and then we get into actually surveying the whole house and keeping the customer engaged with us and educating them. And, and Russ and I talk about building um, the position of trust. We, we're not building a relationship, right? You're not making friends. You, you actually just build a position of trust with the consumer because we both know this is a transaction, right? I mean, that's why you're there. We both know it's business. I mean, we all call ourselves system consultants or comfort advisors or home comfort experts, whatever you call design techs, whatever you're calling yourself. But the customer knows you're a salesperson, yeah, right? So we all know it's transactional based. The key is, listen, let's forget about the transaction, right? Let's just have a conversation. And my, I'm gonna give you some good information so you can make a good decision. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be in alignment with what you want. Okay, it's all going to be in print. It's completely transparent, and you got to make the decisions because we literally will say somewhere during the process, you know, it's your home, it's your family, it's your bank account, and you have to be happy with the choices that you make because you're the one who has to live with them. I don't. Mm -hmm. Here's the reality: I don't care what you do, Bill and Susan, as long as you do it knowingly. Okay, because I'll be happy if you make a choice that you're happy with, as long as you do it knowingly. And so let's get to work, right? Mm -hmm. And that. That is the psychology behind building the position of trust is to take your agenda, your dog out of the hunt, if you will, put your agenda aside and say, I am here. Like you know, I think you said a little bit earlier, I'm here to serve, not sell. Yeah, you know? that's and awesome. So most salespeople sell themselves out of more, of more sales. Okay. And customers who have the right of choice, which we learned in the matrix movies, right? It all comes down to choice. Um, uh, and that's, and that's really, I, I, I even teach that, you know, there's a clip I use from the matrix in my class about this. It all comes down to choice. And so we basically embrace the customers two prize uh, things, their sense of control and right to choose. And I apologize a little bit for the, the groggy voice. I'm a, you know, a little bit of a COVID 2.0. <laughs> well, at least you're in a room by yourself, right? So I think uh, I, I actually think Tersh had to jump. I know he had something at the top of the hour, which I think you might as well. Um, but this information was super valuable. The uh, site for Drew and Russ's coaching program has been at the bottom of the screen. For those listening, that is flowodyssey.us. Um, it'll be in the show notes. Uh, is there anything that we did not touch on that you want to touch on quick here, Drew? No, I appreciate the opportunity, gentlemen. Uh, yeah, good to work with you again. And um, if you want to get a taste of what it is that Russ and I do, um, you know, like you mentioned, you know, join EGIA, Contractor University. We do live, you know, in classroom training, and we also do virtual training. Um, there's all kinds of video being posted uh, and released weekly. You know, with with what we do and what we teach. The idea is, guys. I grew up in this industry. It's given myself and my family everything. Um, and, and we're giving back because we can, and we want to make an impact just like you want to make an impact. And the way to do that is get out of your own way, stop selling, start serving, provide information in a way that people make a decision. Cause I know the contractors that are tuning in, 
you know, you, you think you're giving a better result to a customer. You're giving them a better customer experience. You know, you're doing the right things. And I applaud, you know, you know, the, the hard work that you and your team all put in, right? But you, sometimes you don't get credit for it, meaning the customer's not buying from you and they're buying from somebody else for less, but it's because you've gotten in your own way. The problem is the customer's getting cheated by themselves and they don't even know it. And, and so when you embrace this approach, and we're not the only ones teaching this, there's other people that teach this in the world, right? But we're the only ones doing it in the industry. Um, and, and so what I would say to you is, find a more human way to connect with people. And when you do that, you'll find you'll get better results. Yeah. And I, uh, speaking of assets and things uh, a couple days ago, maybe two or three days ago, uh, you had put out a video. I did put the video in the comments on Facebook and our YouTube page. It was, the video was pertaining to how to make air tangible because as we all know, talking about airflow is something invisible. It's very difficult to make that a tangible thing where people can actually understand it better. And I think that video that uh, Drew put out, which I think is on, I don't know if that's on EGIA and it's also on Flow Odyssey's Facebook page as well. I think the one I added was from Flow Odyssey's Facebook page, uh, but definitely check that that's out. A short link in. Okay. Yeah. So definitely check that out. It's yeah. hangs around for a lot of resources. Week. Yeah, and honestly, if, if any of you the guys, EJA uh, crack, oh, go ahead. The EJA crack in the code video, the one you're talking about, yeah. they hang out live for about a week. If you want to see the archive going forward, you have to join EGIA. But we put those out free for a week. Okay, and uh, the last uh, mention I was going to make is um, a lot of this stuff gets posted initially in the con uh, it's Contractor Connect, I believe, is the Facebook group that EGIA it's has. So definitely check that out. Uh, yeah, that's CJ, CJ over at EGIA does a great job putting out valuable stuff and keeping the conversation going. So definitely check those guys out. And it's a free Facebook page. There's no membership or anything. You can you can join and have good conversations with good people. Awesome. Drew, well, thank so you very good. much. Tersh texted me. He's having some technical difficulties. So we'll end the show without him. Yeah. But really, really appreciate you jumping right. on with us today. And I uh, look forward to catching up with you again soon. Sounds good. Appreciate you guys. All right. See you guys. Thank you for listening to this episode of Service Business Mastery. Now that you are equipped with essential business advice from this impactful conversation, you are one step closer to becoming the successful owner of your dreams. If this episode has been helpful to your business journey, don't forget to subscribe to the show, leave a rating, and share it with other owners as well. Visit servicebusinessmastery.com to learn more.